Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Well, hello everybody. How are you? Welcome to the Ramble. This goes on until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. And in about, oh, I know, a uh, half hour to 30 minutes from right now, uh, we're going to go to our citizens panel. But every now and then we like to talk to, some, I guess I could call it old history, but a new find in a friend. Watch here. Ladies and gentlemen, there she is. That is the ex from Oregon. You're not having fires up there, are you? This is Ronnie oh, Bennett. Oh, terrible fires. It's almost as bad as California and Southern Oregon. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was I thought it was just down in California around Shasta, which is of course near well, the border. Well, that's very north, but it's also moved further north. And you must have heard they said this morning that I've forgotten the name of it, but one of the fires is the biggest ever in California. Yeah. Yeah, it's awful. It, but it, of course, you know, there's no, there's nothing called, there's no global warming, you know. No, there's no global warming. It's fine. It's cool. Uh, I, uh, uh, I, I just uh, think that uh, when the ice age comes, they're going to say there's no global warming. Look how cool it is. They did it, say it, that a lot. Look at those ice. They, the well, North they don't North. understand global warming. It has nothing to do with heat or cold. It has to do with the planet is warming, and therefore it causes effects to happen that will, in many cases, cause freezing. You know, you know I can't just, I'm so worried about the environmental future that maybe we shouldn't talk about that today. <laughs> it's just terrible. Well, what are you worried about the environment? Let me, let me be honest about it. At least what, I'll die what, before Well, it's that's what I'm saying. You know, let the next generation figure this out. Let us just have a nice old age all right well yeah still have to speak up you still have to speak up i see yeah i guess <laughs> i guess um you know but i mean i i i, I it, it, the problem is you tune on to all the news networks and you're thinking the world's coming to an end because they live on the world coming to an end they live on crisis you remember when Days would go by and you didn't hear anything about the president. Maybe he turned up in the Rose yeah. Garden now and yeah, then. Yeah, that was during Obama. <laughs> that was during that Obama. Nothing. Yeah, that was during Obama. You know, you go for a week not hear about the president. This one monopolizes the national conversation. But yes. the, but it's not only that. It's it it's this what I call um, you know I I remember when I was a kid. Yeah. I do remember when I was a kid, folks. Uh, 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 next door, uh, one night on a rainy night, uh, some guy next door uh, took this woman who he was living with and threw her down 50 <gasps> concrete steps, right? She gets to the bottom. She's battered, okay, obviously. And uh, she's rushed to the hospital to take care of her. And her wounds are attended to. And a few days later, they let her out of the hospital. She's back living with the guy. And I often wondered why that happens. And it's because, you know, you have these dysfunctional relationships. You have these, 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 this codependency on misery. And I feel that there's no difference between that and the press and Trump. But, <laughs> I'm so glad you got there. I was wondering where you were going. <laughs> yeah, but there's no difference between that and Trump. You know, that there's a codependency that the press has on having to put up with this guy and give him the publicity he wants. Uh, and, and, and yet, most of the stuff he does isn't even newsworthy. You know, when he goes off to campaign for somebody, you don't have to broadcast the speech. You know, it's that's the not. Time. It's the it, same speech. It's every not time. important. And when he does some, Aren't I wonderful beating my chest. <laughs> and when he does a horrible tweet or something like that, no reason to cover it. So my theory is, stop covering the president in such minutia, and it'll drive him nuts. 
Yeah, well, they won't because everybody, they're afraid everybody else will, and then everybody will go to those channels. Because I think we are all as addicted as the media. We've been trained that way for two years, two and a half years now. Yeah, oh, I, I know my, my wife who says, I hate this. I don't want to watch any of the news. And then and she comes home and she puts MSNBC and on that. and starts going, that son of a bitch, you know. And I'm going, come on. You know, if, if we just stopped reporting him in such minutia, if we only reported him when he did something important or was something newsworthy that affects you and I, it would drive him fucking nuts. But no, they keep reporting on him. He, you know, he, he's, he controls the press. He talks about the fake uh, news. He controls the fake news. So I'm through with my little religious. You're through with that. Well, let me tell you something I'm doing. I don't know if you know, but for many years, from 2007 to 2015, I had a secondary blog called The Elder Storytelling Place. Mm -hmm. And I didn't write for it. Readers wrote for it, and I just published the pieces. I stopped it in 2015 because I'm getting old and I can't do as much work every day. Um, But recently, one of the best writers, over, and by the way, over those eight years, we had more than, way more than 2,000 stories, fabulous stories people told. And I can't remember, but several hundred writers. Um, So, a couple of weeks ago, one of the best who told the best family stories, her name was Nancy Lights. Um, her, one of her kids emailed and said that she had died. She was 89. And, you know, I don't publish Time Goes By on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I, so I was thinking about Nancy and what wonderful stories she and all the other people told. Mm. I thought, you know, one or two days a week, those two empty ones, yeah. I could post stories, but put them on the blog I've got now and keep it down to one or two. Mm-hmm. So as of today, when I publish, uh, today meaning when viewers are seeing this video. Which is, yeah. <laughs> which is, we're recording it on Tuesday, but I will post it for Wednesday. Yeah. Um, will I put all the back end necessary together, and it will start the storytelling again. It'll, I'll, I'm announcing the beginning of it today, and we'll see how it goes. It will be nice. And so... Uh, In anticipation, I want to tell you a story about when you and I moved to New York City. Oh, okay. Memories. Lots of memories (laughs) in my mind. You see, what we always did, if you will remember all the moves that we made, you went ahead and found a place to live, and I followed driving the car and the cats to the new place. Screaming all the way. Not you, the cats. Well, that's another story. And, uh, well, no, what I used to love about traveling with those cats is Yuntov, who was a female, would scream the entire 2,000 miles or oh however long. One time she was pregnant. Oh, my babies, you're killing my babies yeah, the whole way. Yeah, we're, oh, we're all going to die, right? And yeah. meanwhile, Shabbos, who was the older male, uh, the first thing he would do when he got into the car was about within a mile of the trip, take a dump in the back seat. I thought he threw up. I can't remember. No, he was taking a dump. Oh, okay. Throwing up was something he did around the house all the time. He was like this fountain of joy, you know. But anyway, go ahead. So you're, yeah. All right. So always I would tell you what I thought kind of apartment or where you should get it. And I had told you I don't care what you get us in New York City. It has to be in the village. Instead, you got a place in Riverdale so that when I came across the... The, the George Washington Bridge, instead of turning right into Manhattan, <laughs> turned left into South Bronx. So um, we're there, and the moving people are coming, and we're getting settled. And after a week, um, I was taking the bus into Manhattan to meet our friend Mary for lunch, if you remember Mary, mm, yeah. who was a model. We knew her from Houston. Right. And she worked in Manhattan in a place across from uh, Saks Fifth Avenue. So I took the bus in. I I dreamed of being in Manhattan my whole life. Now I'm finally going to set foot on it for the first time ever. And I get out of the bus at 50th and Broadway. And I've never been there, so I'm trying to orient myself. And it's noon, and there's just, you know, New York and Broadway and, fifth, you know, Midtown is like it just people swirling everywhere at noon. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to or- organize myself north, south, east, west. And I hear somebody yelling, sex pervert, sex pervert, sex pervert, 
and I look around, and some guy is pointing right at me. He's wearing a beanie with a propeller, mm-hmm. pointing at me and yelling, sex pervert, sex pervert. And I'm terrified. I just want out of there. People, people aren't stopping. They keep going, but they're turning to look, and I don't much like that. So I finally figured out what direction I was supposed to go in to meet Mary. And he screams it the whole way. I finally get across the street, and I lost him. Now, little side issue. I later found out after we'd lived there a while, someone told me he was well-known on that corner. He'd been doing that for years. His name was Larry, and he was there for years and years. Whenever I passed by during the day, I would see him there. So I walk across to where Mary and I are going to meet on Fifth Avenue, and I'm a little early, and it's at Saxis Avenue, very near that with... Rockefeller Center across the street and the big atlas, you know, the guy holding up the world right. at Rockefeller Center. And I'm watching all the people in New York walking by. At lunchtime, the men all wore suits in those days. This is 19, was it 67, 68 we moved there? Something uh, like 69. that. 69. And uh, so I'm waiting uh, for Mary to meet me there. And people are going by and two guys are going by talking. One of them grabs my arm and says, are you married? And I kind of stutter. I didn't. Nobody ever talked. A stranger never spoke to me like that before. And I kind of stutter. Blah, 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 blah. Well, yes, I am. And he turns to his friend as they walk off and says, "Shit, I'll never be able to find anybody to marry me." And that's when I knew yeah. I would be fine in New York. Yeah. That yeah. anything could happen at any time. And if just you know that, you'll be terrific. You'll get along just fine in New York. And yeah. Yeah. And you got along well in New York. You, in fact, you had a love. I love yeah. New York. I well, miss it every day. Well, you as well as myself had had a love affair with New York. Okay, uh, and, and I I remember that love affair because I find it totally absent in me now. I do not have a love affair with New York. There is nothing. Mm-hmm. There was something about it. I don't know what how I could put it. It to begin with, it was dangerous. You know, it it was a slight... What do you mean it was dangerous? When was it dangerous? I always felt in New York it was like you were walking on the edge of a razor. You know, that... that, that You're living there now. Why are you talking in the past? Because the the past, that's New York in the past. And I like that New York. I like the dirtier New York. I like the rougher New York. I like the, uh, the, the hint of danger New York. Okay. The New York we've got now is is just so sanitized. You can't believe it. You know, I mean, they're gentrifying Harlem. And you know what Harlem's losing? Harlem! You no. know, and I, when I first moved here, I went, you know, there's something about this neighborhood I really like because it's still kind of the New York I used to know. You know, has that kind of edge. It's a land time forgot, you know. And now, forget it. I go up the street. I go one block up the street. It's like I'm anywhere in New York City. I couldn't say I was in Harlem, you know. Mm-hmm. Except uh, one of my blog readers who lives in Quebec sent me an email this morning with a link to a story about a coffee place restaurant um, on Lafayette Street that's closing after 35 years. And although I was never a regular there, um, it was only five or six blocks from where I lived in New York. And so I would stop in or meet friends there for coffee now and again. And all, and last time I was there, my favorite go-to restaurant when you just want something good to eat but you don't want to go a long way or get too fancy, that had closed after it had been there 35 or 40 years, just a block from where I lived. A lot of that's happened. There's a place off of uh, Houston. Um, I forget the name of it, but it was like Marjorie's favorite place to go get brunch, okay, because they had a great... Uh, 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 a great Bloody Mary, uh, and um, we went there. We this uh, I think where our first date was actually there, and we went back you had a to brunch a, date for a first date. Well, we went to a movie and we went to have brunch. Okay, it kind of a it was just a first meeting kind of thing. You know, you you a first date with people. You never make it dinner at night because if you don't like what's going on. Well, you get. I have to be somewhere at five o'clock, right? You know, you have an excuse to get out of it. So the first one is never. Is always something like a brunch or a whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't know that rule. This place, we went by it the other day to say, "Hey, let's go get ourselves something." Around. It's closed after thirty-five years. Yeah. You know, it's just that 
there are a lot of people who have been here a long time. Very successful restaurant. It's not like nobody was dropping by to get food anymore or anything like that. You On a Sunday, you'd have to wait in line to get in there. Uh, but the rents, the you know, all of a sudden the rents come due, and here in New York, they like just going sky high, and people can't afford to keep the doors open any longer. So all the old established little places you like to go to, you know that restaurant you and I used to go to near where you were, that Italian place? Oh, uh, yeah, my it, favorite calamari. I was going to mention yeah, that yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, closed. Ma- closed. Um, closed, closed. Marinella, it was called. Yeah, Marinella, it's closed. Yes, I know. I was, when I was in New York last time, I was really, I was going to, I was walking around downtown. I thought, oh, I'll do lunch there and have my glass of wine and my calamari, which was my go-to lunch when I worked from home. Yeah. And it was turned into some kind of pizza place or something. Because they didn't do the calamari that's bread and all of that. It was the fried calamari. Well, not fried no, it calamari. Was, it was well, a, it was a broiled calamari, broiled calamari with calamari. a great flavoring on it. Yeah, it was right. the best. And uh, she and I used to go there on occasion, and we went back a couple of weeks ago and said, oh, let's go to there. We haven't been there in a while, and we went by, and it's closed. And you go, yeah. come on, this you place know, was... I think, by the way, though, that some of this lamenting what goes away after, I mean, 35 years is a good run, um, lamenting so many places that, you know, you once liked, and, and it's been over many years, I think that's an old person's complaint. Young people don't even know those places ever existed. They have their own that they're going to lament in 25 or 30 years. Yeah, but there was the, the sad part was there was no reason for this place to close down. It would, did great business. It was well, just, no, I mean, what you said before is far more important, I think, in many cities, obviously New York, but many others do these days, yeah. is that usually in New York for a commercial rental you get a 10-year lease. And then it goes up five, six, ten times. The the best bread that I thought in New York City, Zito's in mm-hmm. my neighborhood, yeah. which served lots of Italian restaurants. Um, he'd been there for God, 50, 60 years. Um, when the lease came due again, they increased it five times. And he was very old by then. He said, I can't do this anymore. He said, I can't work that hard. I can't raise the prices that much. So he retired. And seven years later, it was still empty. Yeah. And I think this place... I don't place, know if it this, still is now. This place but has last been... last time I saw it, which was seven years after it had closed, um, it was still empty. Uh, uh, this this uh, uh, place we used to go for brunch, uh, I think it's still empty. It's, you know, nobody's rented it yet. So why raise the rates? Why not just keep the people there? Uh, it's, it's, you know... Accountant type people. Uh, we're get, tell I'm me getting that it has sound, to sound. I'm getting to sound. Deduction, I'm, tax deductions. I'm getting to sound like an old fart when I. When <laughs> yes, I, when I, yes, aren't we all? That's, yeah. It comes with getting old. I think that you're just stuck yeah. with it. You know. You know why does this happen? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 the urban person's version of get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, it, it. But it's sad because. It would be nice, you know, like I was thinking about this. I just when we were talking about this, you know, this place closes down. 21, which was a speakeasy during Prohibition, mm-hmm. is still mm-hmm. open. Mm-hmm. Up there are a few. I think, isn't Delmonico's way downtown in the financial district? It's been there for two or 300 years. Maybe, yeah. And it could be. And part of the reason is I think they own the building. Well, see, that was that was what I had thought about about the bread place, and it, you know, it was so great to walk by it at night because the ovens were in the basement. Yeah. So when you walked by at night, going home, you got the wonderful aroma yeah. of bread baking. Yeah, and, right. As you headed home, but I always wondered why didn't you just buy the damn building? It must have come up from time to time while you were there for fifty or sixty. But years. you know what happens also? Let's say you are you do own the building, okay. And now, uh, all of a sudden, here come developers saying, hey, this is a nice piece of land. We want to buy it from you so we can build a 50-story building or something like right, that. Yeah. And there's enough money in it, and you go, fuck it. Why do I have to keep serving sandwiches? You know. Um, in fact, what they're doing now, we now have these new buildings in New York, which I say is the new, sky, the new skyline of New York, which are these, what I, I call them pencil buildings. Mm-hmm. Right, they yeah. go up. They're higher, maybe, than the Empire State Building. Oh, but, well, but the, lots but, are these but, days. But they have a very small footprint, and I'm mm-hmm. thinking they bought a bodega from somebody. 
and then tried to figure out a way that they could put a building in there. So a little tiny piece of land way up the It's line. exactly what they do, you know. So, I mean, uh, but, but you know, that if somebody wants to buy it, you're going to sell. You know, especially if they really, because land here is, you know, it's very expensive. So, well, but, I, I think the thing is that the way the prices go for anything in New York having to do with real estate is you always could sell it. If you really liked what, you were, what your well, business was, you could still keep doing my it. My great love always, and I'm sure probably yours once I mention it, is P.J. Clark's. Which I used it, to go which there is now a bar, again, but I wasn't one of which, the in crowds, which is so it a wasn't, one, didn't attract me a that one, much. A one-story building, maybe three-story building, I don't know, but it, it was a bar, and they owned mm -hmm. the building, okay? And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden, somebody wanted to come and build a giant skyscraper, right? And they wanted to buy P.J. Clark's, and P.J. Clark said, fuck you. So they literally built the building around P.J. Clark's. You know, I can't swear to this, but I have a sense that downtown in the village that NYU, New York University, did that around the house of some 19th century writer. Um, I can't remember. Oh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Yes. I'm not positive, but I think that's what happened with the place he had once lived. Yeah, and they built built a building around it, the same kind of way. Yeah, yeah. I remember that seeing in China there was this guy who refused to move, and they were literally building this huge. I mean, I don't know. You've never been to Beijing, but the 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 size of the buildings is amazing, just amazing. I mean, just a footprint, okay? And they were building the thing around this one guy's little house. It was like this ditch around him. Yeah. On YouTube somewhere, I don't know the name of it to tell you, There's, and I don't remember what city, but it's not a U.S. city, it's either Canada or Europe. There's a, a between two buildings, there's like very narrow, like less than yeah. six or seven feet wide, yeah. and somebody built a house in there, a very, very, yeah. very narrow house, and it's, but vertical, so there's like five stories, and you can stand in the middle of the house and touch each other, either wall. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if in the future they take one of these small little footprints and then put a building up and then as soon as they get higher than the buildings around them, move it out and let it balloon out. Oh, that's out. an interesting idea. By yeah. the air rights, you mean. By yes. the air rights, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. But, uh, you know, but the New York that we moved into had a sense of danger. When the subway went by, there was so much graffiti on the trains that it was like this blur of color. I almost enjoyed it in a strange way. There's an old joke about New York that I, I first heard when we first moved there, and I've always loved it. it it's a Q&A. The question is, when was New York really, really great? Just before you got there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I just don't, maybe it's because I'm older and I don't do the nightlife and things like that, but I don't find anything exciting about New York. I just find it big, uh, crowded, um, expensive, uh, what what have you, you know? Uh, I, I, of course, me, I would, because I grew up in the country, I would love to like, you know, live like you do and maybe a little more I've rural I've got an area. idea. What? We'll trade apartments. We trade. We'll trade apartments. You have to discuss that with my wife who refuses to move out of New York City. Well, I understand. I'm with her. You know, she. I'm, I'm so sorry I had to leave. You know, she says, "No, where there's no way we're moving out." I said, "Well, you know." Well, if it ever gets to that, I'm sitting here and out my window. There's a few more apartment buildings. They're only two stories high. Lots of trees and grass, and mountains all around you. Yeah. And I would just love to be in Manhattan again. Oh well, you know, we have a guest room, by the way. <laughs> and so do I. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, and and the guest room is this summer is being taken up quite often. So you know, it's uh, it's amazing. So anyway, uh, you're feeling good. Life is. I feel uh, fine. Life is fine. Uh, you yeah. know. Uh, no complaints. Woman's a woman's a survivor. Uh, she not only survived uh, ill health a while back, uh, cancer, but uh, she also survived me, which I think is even a bigger <laughs> uh, a bigger accomplishment. You know. Um, it was okay. Uh, I think that it would have been easier if we'd gotten, 
if we were old when we met. <laughs> well, you know, if, if, let me put it this way. Marjorie and I look at each other sometimes and just go, so this is what it's come to, huh? <laughs> you know, uh, we never talk divorce because well, it's ridiculous, you know, at this age. You know, when you're young, hey, maybe I got another two wives in me. <laughs> you know? I never thought of it that way. <laughs> yeah, but at our age, you go, well, at least it, the company's fine, you know. So, it, it, I, you know, what have you. Uh, but uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you. And, and it, it, as I say, it's so nice that we can reminisce about New York City. And you told your little story about people yelling at you. Um <laughs> There were the st there were just one last thing here. There were always the street corner screamers in mm -hmm. New York. We don't have those anymore. Really? No, I haven't come across one. I, long I have to tell you one quick one. I was walking. A friend of I think it was my brother's girlfriend back in those days uh, was visiting New York, and I don't think she was staying with me, but we were spending some time. And she'd come to my apartment, and we were walking from my place on Bedford Street to wherever we were going. And we walked by a guy who was begging, who I recognized. And once in a while, I gave him money when I went past. But that time, we were busy talking, and um, I would, didn't want to hunt for the change or anything. So we just kept going right past him. And then I hear him out. She was very tall and very thin and gorgeous and much younger than I was. And we, so we passed, and then I hear him yell at us, I never met a blonde who didn't have money. <laughs> stuff in New York. There was another time I'm coming out of the subway on a horrible, horrible hot evening, sweaty and just at the worst of that kind of summer day that New York can provide. And we're crowded going up the stairs and I hear a voice right in my ear saying, would you go to the movies with me? I was probably in my 40s at the time. And I turn around and there's about a 19 year old, very good looking Puerto Rican kid. And I was so shocked. I said, I'm old enough to be your mother. And he said, yeah, but I loves my mama. <laughs> <laughs> I remember once walking down the street. This was on Broadway. And a guy goes, you know, uh, a, a spare change, right? And I just walk by him because that's what you do. You don't engage them. You just walk by. And as I get about five steps away from him, he goes, you heard me. New York so much. Yeah, well, if I at least had that, I would be happy with New York. But I don't. We don't have that anymore, you know. Or maybe you don't get out and about as much to see it. That could be. Anyway, Ronnie, always wonderful talking to you, and yes. we'll do this again in a couple of weeks, okay? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Take the care. fabulous Ronnie. Oh, let's tell them where they can find you. Timegoesby.net, which is her yes. blog, and it's all about what it's like to get really old. And as of today, we're starting the storytelling again. Okay. Bye-bye, Ronnie. Bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. And here I am again. I got to tell you something. You know, things always happen at the last minute on a show. Like this interview is coming to an end. So I'm, I'm, I'm going with my mouse, right? I'm taking my mouse and I'm moving her. And I'm there's no... There's no uh, uh, arrow. There's no. Um, there's no uh, nothing. It's uh, just not uh, not happening. And I suddenly realize that, you know. So I immediately look, and the red light is flashing on the bottom of it. And I figure, I don't know what that is, but I, I better change the battery. And then I'm I'm rifling around, and it's the interview slowly coming to an end. And I'm rifling around uh, uh, doing the. Uh, uh, looking in my uh, thing for for a for a battery, and finally I find one, and uh, I'm delighted that I found it. But then I got to get it into the into the mouse before it's I just in time. I got uh, um, the the mouse, uh, the new battery in the mouse. Actually, I I got this thing maybe a year ago, and I haven't changed the battery in it. So you know, there's the battery. And there goes the battery. Okay, anyway, I'm, uh, I'm going to open up the lines here. Um, what is left of the current version of Skype, which goes uh, the way of all flesh in a couple of weeks, and then we're going to see whether we still have any kind of show going here. 
uh, but we'll figure that out as time goes by. Uh, but meanwhile, we want to hear from you. If you don't know how to get a hold of this program, go over to gabnet.net. And at least for the time being, it tells you how to get Skype. And uh, you get Skype, and then you call us using Skype. I think all the, all the uh, oh, uh, uh, gabnet.net on the right-hand side of the page. And by the way, you can still see the video of this because the video is running right now on gabnet.net. Um, so uh, give me a, you know, you go over there, and there's just a whole litany of how you can, how you can do this. Now, last week was really slow. I mean, deadly slow for callers. And I don't know what the problem was, but if it happens this week, maybe I'll be glad when the new Skype comes along and I can give up on this whole mess. Uh, but we certainly didn't lack for, for viewers of the videos after the fact. Here's the reason why. I, I, I didn't know something. I have a Facebook page I didn't even know I had. Uh, it, that's right. If you go over to uh, facebook.com forward slash Alex Bennett program, all one word, uh, you will find I have a, a Skype page there. So uh, I had a program which would send videos over to, over to Facebook, but it wouldn't do it, uh, it wouldn't do it immediately. Uh, it wouldn't do it to the old, uh, to the, like what's called my timeline. And it seems as though um, Facebook has done away with that, I guess, for one reason or another. And it was sending it over to a page that said Alex Bennett, and I didn't know where that was, so I went and looked it up. Turns out that that page actually was Alex Bennett Program. And I looked over there, and over at Gabnet Live, you know, where we sometimes have a repository of this stuff, I have like, I don't know, 256 followers. Over there, I have like 22, 2300 followers. And the videos that I put up in the last couple of days were getting enormous amounts of people watching them. And I didn't even know that was happening. So it, uh, it uh, made me feel a lot better about uh, the reach of this program. Hey, here's John Perulis. How are you, John? Good to see you. Hi, Alex. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because I switched uh, cameras to a Microsoft Life Cam, and uh, I tried to download drivers for it, and mm -hmm. it said, no, if you're using Windows 10, which I hate, by the way, I, I, I just it's still, some of my laptops are on Windows 7, and yeah. I appreciate that a lot more. Really? So there's no way I can adjust the I heard the reason they went to 10 was because 8 and 7 and 8 were so terrible. Yeah, I never even tried them. Uh, you know, I just bought a new laptop and it came loaded with ten. And I hate I don't the think, I Microsoft add-ons. Uh, well, I, I, yeah, but I don't, I don't find that much wrong with uh, uh, ten. I think that it's the first time I've ever liked a PC again. Let me put it that way. You know. Hey, can, can I show you what I'm working on right now? Sure. I, I'm gonna have to leave the show after 15 minutes. Oh well, then uh, you shouldn't have called. Then you shouldn't have. Call, then you shouldn't have called in the first place. <laughs> Uh, uh, a fight yeah. that uh, Phil was at again. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? That's what I'm working on right now is editing videos mm -hmm. that we shot the other day. I almost oh, okay. had some uh, expensive Sony headset stolen from me there, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. the head of uh, Dragon House uh, saw the guy uh, with a, one of my uh, headsets, uh, Sony, the c same kind I'm wearing now. Uh, dangling out of his backpack, so he stopped the guy, and the guy, you know, he said, "Hey, those are my my headphones," and he he got two of them back anyway, Phil. You know, so yeah, well, that's good news. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, nobody likes to have junk stolen from them. Uh, you know, when they're working. I, I got to tell you, uh, Alex, Phil was so helpful on on the shoot. We were in a new venue right next to Rosie the Riveters. Uh, there's a, it's called Craneway Pavilion. In fact, that's where they used to assemble tanks mm -hmm. in uh, World War II. The Rosie the Riveters worked on tanks too, mm -hmm. and uh, it's part, it's at the end of a big pier uh, it, in Richmond, and the ships used to come in, uh, the Liberty ships and so forth, and just load these tanks. It was such an easy operation, and then they can head out the Golden Gate and go to the Pacific or you know, what, whatever uh, destination they had in those days. So, uh, and the, Phil, city of, the, city of, 
the city of Richmond would find a way to fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, Phil was so helpful to me. Uh, there was a lot. There's always a lot of chaos setting things up. You know, I, I do multicam. I had three cams mm -hmm. operating uh, on the shoot, and Phil's there running cable for me. And uh, he, the guy, bought sandwiches. I mean, you know, for my whole crew. You know, it's just an amazing thing. So, you know. So in other words, he bought your 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 loyalty. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, it's uh, it's the fair thing to do. He gave me uh, wonderful access uh, to to shoot some great stuff, and uh, you know, I you know, I wanted to repay in a, in some way, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, Phil, uh, you know, put your stuff on uh, your Facebook page. You know, some oh. of these that you got, they're really very artistic. I, I, I was quite impressed. Yeah, well, thank you. I will. Uh, I, I've I've got to sit down and. Uh, uh, and work with them. They're you know they're all shot in raw, so uh, you can't just put them up. Yeah. Yeah. Raw is so weird. It's like when you shoot uh, stills or video in raw. I mean the image that comes out is sort of foggy and weird. I can never figure that out. That you know the the problem I see with it is that you have to use another program to manipulate the colors, and that's like oh man, you know just another layer. Of stuff to Listen, do. Listen, I have an idea. Can't you guys call each other on Skype and have this conversation? <laughs> because believe me, nobody out there cares what you're talking about. Well, you should you should enjoy this. I mean, you did get an Emmy for uh, video and things like that. This has been a big part of your life. Hey, uh, twenty people watching—that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, they're <laughs> usually about thirty. <laughs> yeah, well. Those are the ones that are still uh, waiting for the drugs to wear off. You know. <laughs> yeah. So. Hey, uh, Alex, uh, I caught the tail end of your show with your wife, the ex-wife, and uh, I gotta say, I really appreciate the stories of the street people. I find that those folks are missing too, because uh, you know they're in homeless camps in San Francisco. We have a few in San Rafael here, but I I'm telling you, you know the. People that are on the edge of reality, I really enjoy their company sometimes because they'll say the funniest things and do the most outrageous things. Well, and you, I think you, life but, is But you less know what? I think the, dif the difference is today between the, the homeless people today and those homeless people is that I almost at times felt that those homeless people were, were the way they were and living the life they were living by choice. You know, yeah. that that uh, that it hadn't been that life dealt them some horrible blow, but that you, either psychologically or for whatever reason they wanted to do it. Um, and uh, but, uh, by the way, you should also put your camera so that it doesn't keep focusing itself. Uh, well, uh, that's what I can't do. I was saying I'll have to you break can, off you, of this you, camera you, and you, you, download no, some software no. or something because there's no way I can control it. You can yeah, do it. Also, the, uh, the white you, balance on it, you're real orange. Yeah. Hey, just like your favorite. No, but I mean, you can, you can do you can do uh, at least do the focus thing in uh, in Skype. It's Skype that's doing it. Yeah. Oh, it's Skype that's doing it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hate this version of Skype. I mean, uh, I used to be able to test audio and video easily on the old Skype, and I was looking for that on this one. I couldn't find it because I was trying to, you know, make these adjustments and stuff. And uh, it, I guess it's going to be moot if uh, you know you're saying they're giving up support yeah for skype uh, alex but they're still going to let the program filter on out there in cyberspace right what do you mean i don't understand what you're saying no is the program going to end or are they going to let it keep going in some way what program the, end the, uh, the skype he service. said that as of uh as of uh september 1st you uh he won't be able to use the uh, uh the, the, the current, classic skype the, the that he's been classic using. current oh, skype oh, oh okay yeah because Cause I'm using the new improved whatever it is, and I don't like it. Well, of oh, I see what's happening to me now. I'm getting in and out. Of, if I stay really still, like a yeah. statue, then yeah. But uh, 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 no, they, they, you know, it's typical of of these companies that they take something and they say they're improving it when they're not improving it at all, you know. Or at least by the time they force you to go to it, it should be so improved that nobody will complain. But nobody likes this new Skype. No. You know. Yeah. Are you using you, the new Skype, Phil? No. Are you using still, the new Skype? Yet? Jeff, yeah, and Jeff. I, I what do you it. think of it? Not as good as the old one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
So I mean, so, it, yeah. it, 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 and having you know, I'm sure they've gotten. Uh, well, of course, there's no way to get a hold of Skype, so I don't know how they're going to hear from people. You know? Well, it's Microsoft, so they they've got to keep a staff employed, and the geeks need to tweak the program somehow, so, you know, to justify their existence there. So I think that's what we're seeing is that. Uh, you know, if this is a job someone has to look at this program and work on it and try to improve it, and and yeah, so I'm doing, sure that if, they, if they're seeing really if they're program. seeing enough complaints saying we like the old Skype classic, yeah, they should yeah. just stay with it. It wouldn't hurt them to stay with it and also have this one available as well. How are they getting complaints if you can't call them? Yeah, you know, well you that's the thing. Them, you can't you call can, them. You try and call or write right. Skype. So, you know, they're, they're, they're deaf to the public's yeah. uh, reaction to this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I find that very upsetting. And so I went out, you know, I did, my, I did a lot of research one week. I mean, I've been working on this thing, but, uh, testing out various ways of doing the picture. I may have to do the whole thing on my Mac, but there is a way I can do it on the PC, but I have to use another program in order to filter the Skype screen. In, oh, it's, 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 it's a mess. It's just a mess. Here it's simple, but that's a mess. And I, I wish there was some open source uh, program. Well, like no, Skype. Yeah, no, no, no. But that's what I was going to say. I did my research. I went online and played around with every possible program that said that. Well, if you don't like Skype, try us. I got news for you. None of them are as good <laughs> as Skype. Now I know that's hard to believe. Yeah, you know, yeah. but even even Google, who has a thing called uh, Google Hangouts, yeah, Hangouts, yeah. which is just is just pathetic, absolutely <laughs> pathetic. Well, now, uh, once you if you stay on that program, a full house is four people. E well, so, well, no, no, <laughs> yeah. the, you can get. I can get. No, believe it or not, you can get up to twenty five people on the line at the same. But you time. can't see them. But you can't see them because you get a little circle up in the top. If, right. The first couple, you get a picture. You're yeah. supposed to be the ringmaster. Yeah. So, therefore, if you can't control, you know, who's talking or, or, or what, which, you know. You, you well, we're going to have to have a new rule. Me. You don't raise your hand. <laughs> you don't raise your hand. You shout your name, and then I can go up there and click on the circle that says five people are in here and find you and drag you down. Well, that's a lot of work. I know it's a lot of work. Especially if it's Steve or somebody that's saying something that doesn't need to be said anyway. I mean, you know? what, 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 in what world do they think that only four people want to talk at the same time? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, again, we're, we're talking about free software, right? Because we could go to GoToMeeting or something like that. Oh, you really, really you want to go to GoToMeeting? They suck, too. <laughs> well, uh, those, those things are good for one-way... Uh, conversation. Yeah, go to meeting is great for uh, meetings, okay? Yeah. But not right. not for not for what we do here. Y yeah, you have a presenter. A presenter presents their thing, and you're the audience. Yeah. But it, it doesn't uh, doesn't. And, and I can't figure out Google Hangouts. I just can't figure it out. You know, yeah. I mean, I think there's some way to make it work, but it's, you know, what they should do is they should have incorporated since I'm using YouTube which is a Google product, okay? They should have found an easy way for me to do Google Hangouts on YouTube. You know, I just do YouTube and I say I want to do a Google Hangouts YouTube and I suddenly have a place where all you guys can call in. Why haven't they done that? You know, what's yeah. holding them back? Yeah, you know, I'd love to see Twitch uh, take this on and uh, institute... Uh, a Twitch, version Twitch, of what Twitch, they do, Twitch is, like Skype. Twitch is for gamers. It's it's a yeah, gamer. I know, but it's they a, it's, also it, have it's, interesting uh, uh, it, dynamics it, and no, video no, but production. It, no, but it, but it, not not this kind of thing. Not they, yeah, they don't have group right. calls. Well, that's what I'm saying. That they should move into. Well, this Well, I mean, kind there's Twitch, and there are a ton of other ones that should be doing it, but none of them. There's yeah. uh, 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 what were the, some of the ones I looked at, and some of them were just pathetic. And they said, "Oh, yeah. we're better than Skype." Yeah, really. Yeah. Show me. You know, you you. Well, I guess if you're going to do it in video, it's one thing. Or if you're going to do it in audio, you could probably do it over phone lines. No, uh, I mean, I'll, I mean, I could do. I could go back to just doing the show on audio, or going doing the show. But 
How do how do you know when people want to ch jump in and say something? How do I know yeah. when I can't see yeah. all of them? Who yeah. wants to yeah. talk? You know, so then I guess I have to click on the bubble that says five, and I guess I see five uh, five people, or if it says six, it's there's six people in there. I mean, I don't know. I haven't done it yet. Hey, I've yeah. got a uh, Ukrainian tech friend. I'll ask him if the Ukrainians or the Russians have anything like Skype. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe yeah. we could use that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, Jeff, did you say you're using the new Skype? Yeah. Yes, I am. Uh, Jeff? Oh, okay, sorry. so what I'm happens back. when there's more than four people on at a time? What happens? You only get to see four in the small picture of the rest. Right. That's oh, right. There's a picture of each of them? Yeah. yeah oh, okay. They're small. They're small. And it, 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 if if we have more. Hey, I could show you right oh, wait now. Wait a minute. Let me hold on a second. Uh, no, yeah, I don't. Is... It, it, well, I don't need to see it because we don't have enough here now. Okay. So it yeah. doesn't it doesn't so, matter. So right now I'm seeing the three of you guys. Yeah. But we don't and have. myself. Yeah. In a small square. Right. Now, when. Uh, but when we've had. When you've come on here and there are like maybe seven people, eight people. All those other people are their own individual circle? Their own little circle. Okay. Yeah, to see that I'm showing you what Except I'm seeing. For, okay. uh, maybe yeah. uh, I always see like three or four people uh, fully organized. Fully, fully organized, and then you see right. circles of everybody else. Right. And, I, and, and let's say uh, you're one of the small people. Yeah. I can pick you up. Yeah, and drop and me in. in. Yeah. And, and get rid of Phil. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, if the small circle starts talking, do they automatically uh, go into the one of the larger spaces? No. No, it's oh. not that sophisticated. Oh. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, it's only a manual change. I see. Okay. Okay. Uh, but, the but, only changes but, I notice is like at the beginning. If like we have just two people and then we have three people, and then then people start going into the small. A little. Okay, yeah. but 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 there's a there's a circle for everybody else that's there, not just one circle that has a whole bunch of them in the circle. Even when he has ten people. Mm, yeah. If there's ten people, there should be. I would think there there would be I don't know what seven. Little dots. People in the circle. In the no, circle. Well, Jeff, okay. you're right. Uh, what well, I'm is that, seeing is that's just well, we'll four windows, well, yeah, and we'll, that's it. We'll find out when that happens, but the way things have been going, I don't even need those. Uh, you know, I mean, here we are on a Monday. I got low audience numbers. I got... Um, well, if we're here on a Monday, you, you, a you Tuesday, know... Rather, Tuesday, rather Tuesday. Any, I, here uh, on a Tuesday. Uh, you don't have any audience. Here right? on a Tuesday... And uh, I don't know who the hell this is. It's probably Steve calling from yet another phone number. Hello, mm -hmm. who is this? Who is this? Hey, it is Steve. Yeah, Steve, you always call from a different phone number. See, this time I am. I'm at a friend of my sister's. Um, um, I'm on a real phone. You could probably tell. <laughs> uh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Let's see here, I'm trying to, I'm trying to actually put your name on here, but I can't do it. So. Okay. Yeah, oh, we uh, name. Here, here, here we go. James, here. Uh, Jim uh, Delia. Uh, yeah, sorry, but. It's no, you don't have but... to give me his name. I'm just putting your name in here so I know who it yeah. is. Okay. All right. All right. There we go. Yeah, but if he's using a friend's phone, then you're going to be logging in the friend's. No. Uh, every time he calls me no, from I, that I, phone, I, it would I say won't Steve. Use this often, but when I'm here. You know, this is in the town I grew up in, and he was a friend of my sister's, and uh, um, just here, he's got air yeah. conditioning and good things, so uh, you got to stay for a while. Oh, boy, it's <laughs> getting boring. Uh, anyway. So it's pretty hot out by you guys, huh? Uh, it's horrible. <laughs> where, where are you? I'm in New Jersey. Oh, New Jersey, yeah. 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 It's, uh, you know, right, right outside of New York City, uh, Bergen County. Pacific folks, County. if you've got anything better to do, I'd suggest go doing it. Anyway, hi. Um, so let's uh, uh, let me see here. So uh, so anyway, what's going to happen on the on the first is I'm just going to have to tackle this whole thing and probably do it from the from the Mac, in which everybody will probably be. I don't know. We'll see. It may it may be it may work out just fine. You know, 
I mean, I may hate it for a while, but I'll find a workaround and uh, uh, we'll, we'll do it right. Uh, but uh, they've made it so that, for instance, on the PC with the programs I use like OBS and, and uh, uh, what's, what's the other program I use here? Uh, uh, Wirecast. XSplit. XSplit. Uh, you can't, you can't, it won't, it can't be, it can't do Skype immediately on it, you know, mm. but there is a way I can do it, but it's so clumsy that I hate to do it. I have to launch another program that somehow mm. reads the Skype picture, you mm. know, I mean, it, it's, it, they just fuck this whole thing up for everything. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, hey, Steve, do you have crazy people on your street? Uh, well, I'm not uh, a, well, I'm Steve, on a main Steve is where the crazy person live. on the street. Um, you know, where I actually live is a main thoroughfare, <laughs> and I'm sure there are plenty of crazy people, yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. Well, I know we got a bunch uh, living in the White House, but, uh, you know, I wonder yeah, if that well. counts. <laughs> They're crazy in a really, I, I don't even know what kind of craziness I could describe that as, but they are absolutely, they're crazy and they're out of their minds. Well, so, if, if you're saying it, then I suppose they are. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. I want to know, <laughs> know why comedians think that they're qualified to comment on uh, politics, uh, okay. where you know most comedians grew up, the only reason they were funny was because if they weren't, they got beat up as kids. You know, uh, <laughs> what makes them qualified to? Well, what, uh, uh, well, I'm going. What, what makes politics? Will Durst qualified to talk politics? He's a political I don't comic. Know that he is. He's a political comic. What yeah. what gives Bill Maher that ability? Well, he he's defined as a political comic. They make well, you know. It's like saying uh, saying what is what why 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 does Will Rogers commenting about what goes on in Congress? He's just a a movie actor. No, he was yeah. a political comedian. He That's made right. political it's like commentary. Is comedy. It's a level of comedy. And quite That's frankly, qu quite frankly, what makes a reality show host think he can talk about politics? <laughs> he got elected. <laughs> he got elected. Yeah, but that's about the extent of it, you know. <laughs> And yeah, they're, they're really anybody, they're anybody, anybody who job. has anybody who has a, a stage and yeah. wants to talk out about the politics of the day, I think uh, has the right to do so. I'll tell you what I'm a little bit mixed up on here, and I haven't been able to figure out in my mind or justify in my mind, but I'm a little upset about what they did to Alex Jones. Yes, I agree. Now, I, uh, 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 let me start out by saying, so none of you go, you think Alex Jones is okay and with the whole thing with the school up in Connecticut and he didn't thought it was a hoax? No, I think Alex Jones is a whack job. I think yeah. that he's, he's, he's dangerous because he doesn't think about the safety of his audience. You know, um, he puts his audience in danger in a lot of cases, but... Uh, I just think that banning him from a public forum like Facebook or a public forum like iTunes or a public, any of these public forums that have taken him off is absolutely wrong and is yeah, against, I, the, I the, is against yeah, the, very, I, yeah. the very reason these things exist in the first place. And this is the kind of selective news uh that uh it, we're we're hearing that, that, now this is, this is what this trump is, says is, it, is no, fake no, news no 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 this isn't this isn't what is fake news this is no we're talking about freedom of speech this is companies well, yeah, this is only, it, you listen to me phil this is sure, these are companies <laughs> giving you what you want to hear the, the com companies trying to save their ass you yeah. know by by looking and posturing uh for political correctness and right. I, I find that, you know, if Facebook says, hey, whatever you want to post, post on our pages, then that should be our freedom to do that. You know, because yeah. if they go after Alex Jones, what's to say tomorrow they don't come after me? You know, because I might be saying something bad about Facebook. My, my comment on uh, Facebook threads about this story was 
uh, the right to freedom of speech means freedom of speech. Well, freedom of speech is an is, absolute. It's not. Uh, it's not freedom of speech except. Is Facebook really a public forum, or is it a pri- is it well, a company? Uh, I, I think when they say yeah. all comers yeah. can have a page here to say what they want to say, they have made it a public forum. But whether, they've got whether, rules. whether you want to. They make up those rules they, as they I go understand along because it's their company. No, they have they, stand, yeah, certain standards right. that they set. Well, it's not like it's, the FCC look, governs, right? It. You right. know, you could say, and I could say, "fuck, fuck, fuck" here, and mm-hmm. I'm not going to be cut off or anything. Yeah, but because the FCC does not regulate this. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, it, it, it's it, it, it's a publicly traded, but it's still a, a commercial business. Oh, we've been joined by uh, Jack Bishop. Jack, turn on your your camera. Oh, okay, you know, I, I swore I was not going to do this. <laughs> Why? Why did you hey, swear well, you listen, weren't going to do it? A lot of other people are swearing they're not. Hey, John. A lot of other people are swearing they're not going to do it, and they we'll live up to it. What? Right. <laughs> I would like to answer Mr. Meyer's comment what? and question about what gives someone the uh, right to comment about politics. The authority or the right? The right. Well, everyone has the right. Exactly. Yeah. Just what makes them qualified is what I asked. Well, what makes anybody qualified? Who? No one's qualified. Well, I know that none of you guys are qualified, but, you know. (laughs) Not me. And neither are you. You know, you don't give up your right to comment about the political process just because of your occupation. Hell, if that was true, half of the people in Congress wouldn't be talking about any damn thing. Where did John Peru- Where did John yeah, Perulis yeah. go? Uh, he said he had to sign off. He's working. He's uh, well, then he should then he his... should have never called in the first place. No, he no I he should have. They should have. I ne- talked to him today. He should have never said, called. Yeah, call in. No, he should have never you know? called in the first place if he can't stick around. You know? No, that's not true. That was never the deal. Well, uh, that's my deal. Oh no, wait a minute! It was yeah. never the deal. Huh? All right. Was that deal in writing, Phil? Uh, no, was but deal, it wasn't was the deal. Then it, then it wasn't. There was the never deal. a rule on GabNet that said you had to stick around the whole time. Mr. Bennett's house, Mr. Bennett's roots. Uh, his glove, his ball. You know, That's okay. right. Yeah. yeah. His, his game. Yeah. But you, you should be lucky the guy calls. He's a good guy. Well, he never. He hardly calls anymore. No, he was an all-American. All he wasn't a good guy. Huh? No, he was a good guy. He wasn't an all-American. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy he called, and uh, you should be too. I'm not. Uh, let me see here. You never have. <laughs> well, I can't get well, rid of. I, like I can't get rid of his like square Jack though. Alex cr- there we like go. You're gonna. You, there we uh, go. How does yeah, this yeah, thing sound? Do it. I wish Alex would do it more often because you know we go back such a long ways. Yeah. You know, he knew me before I had hair under my armpits. How, Jack, how is, I uh, am so glad that you're on here. You have no idea. You are, I just, I, the two of you are, are equally, equally, in my opinion, uh, so much worthwhile. This guy's a sick puppy. He thinks you and I are. I told you, he's a, you know, he's a guy who, when people are weird, says they're weird. When he says they're weird, they are weird, you know. <laughs> now, the weirdest guy in our business I ever worked with was a guy that had a foot fetish. Uh oh. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, let, let's get back to what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Alex Jones. Oh boy. Yeah. Now, you know, I mean, I I just feel that you know it, it's interesting, Phil, that you know, you're taking Facebook's side on this. Uh yeah, because they're they're a um uh oh, I see. In other words, you yeah, okay. Uh, uh you know, it, it's a it's a publicly traded company, but it is that's what it is is a company and they don't guarantee anyone uh, a right to free speech. They say that you can use their platform as long as you abide by their rules, and they're the ones that make well, the rules. Well, okay, their glove, okay, all right, their ball, all right. Give me a list. Uh, tell me those rules. You use Facebook. What are the rules? Uh, I 
think you can't say things that are inflammatory or uh, hate speech or things like that. But it's well, funny. Wait a what the, what defines what defines hate speech? Who and who's going to define that hate hate speech? Well, I can tell you that if it comes from a liberal, it's not hate speech. No, hold on. It's so free speech. Forget that that. Look, the, I have the, I have joking. Friends. You always turn everything into a no, joke wait, rather wait than deal with the subject. All right. I have some friends that are so pro-liberal that everything they post is anti-Trump, that the guy's a scumbag, he's this, he's that, he's bad for the country. Uh, you know, and, you know, there are hate things in there. They want him to die. They, they want him to have a heart attack. You yourself has said you want him in the center of a stadium where people all pray that he has a heart attack. Now, is this not hate speech? Uh, you know, the only thing that you uh, yeah, didn't say I, I, was I Sig Heil. No, no, no. People should not pray. I'm asking people. I, I am. I'm. I, I'm asking people to pray, Phil. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I, Jack I, wanted I, to. I, yes, I pray, I'll tell you what I pray for. I pray that something happens. I don't want it to be detrimental or anything like that. But I just pray that something happens that gets him the hell out of there as soon as possible. Okay, and, and then, what you, then what are you going to do about Pence, Steve? Oh, he's even, you know, he's he, almost yeah, even okay. worse. So let's, because let, he has some intelligence and he doesn't use it. Yeah. Trump is just a buffoon. Uh, yeah, Pence is insurance, okay? Yes, Jack? Uh, Phil, I just wanted to point out to you that for seven of the eight years that the last guy was in office, he endured the same kind of stuff. You know, it's just yeah. it's off the turn now. No, no nowhere it's, near. Oh, it's, oh, nowhere oh, near oh, oh, racist. What, uh, what racist. Is being given. Oh, go back and take a look. It's yeah. jump ball, that's all. My because truth. they, they pull the race card every time somebody said something against the, Obama. The, the, and and you know something? In most cases, the race the, card was appropriate. The, there are two race cards in the deck. They are American cards. We have a right to play them. <laughs> there are you, two? That's yeah. your rules now, huh? Yeah. No, no, that's no listen. There are this two. is nothing more than identity politics. People are being divided and and the and Facebook and the Russians have and, done a very good job of and, causing no, the liberals. When have to, we not been a divided nation? Well, when, right now we're more divided than we've ever you, been. So I asked the question, name me one time we Look, have not been a divided right nation. Right now, name me the, one the, time America not. is being divided in a way, I think they're all being manipulated, and this is maybe a Russian attack or a Chinese attack, and I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, uh, oh. but as far as I can see, <laughs> there, is, there is an attack on this nation, and, and people are falling into lockstep with the fake news. And, uh, and, and liberals uh, are really falling into lo lockstep. When have we not been a divided nation? Uh, maybe, maybe a time maybe, Oh, well, uh, we Phil, have Phil, 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 is more. MSNBC ah. fake news? Yeah, is, I can't say again. Is MSNBC fake news? Uh, in a way, yes, and but so well, is Fox. Uh, uh, no, oh, no, so no. is Fox. And, and, yeah, okay. They're, they're both, uh, yeah. How let, about let how about how about Newsmax? Uh, uh, yeah, you know, isn't that uh, okay? So what you're saying is any news anybody who reports is fake. Yes, for this reason. No, wait, and let me explain. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who isn't fake? Who isn't fake news? Name me an I'll outfit that isn't. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. I'll tell you in a minute. What, what's happening is is all of these networks are, in, are trying to vie for eyeballs. And what they're doing is they're only reporting certain stories. If you hear a story that's, let's say, pro-gun, you're never going to hear it on MSNBC because they're going to report those stories that, uh, yield the end You're result not answering my question, yeah, Phil. That's not really, that's Phil, that's not really fair because MSNBC, they will talk about it. They'll report about it. They may dispute it. No, but they won't they even will mention talk about it. Look, look, I, I'm, I, you know, I am not going to uh, argue that there aren't biases on the parts of these various networks because somehow that's the, how the game has started to be played, is take your stance and then stick with it, okay? Yes. If you're Fox, you're in one place. If you're MSNBC, you're in another place. If you're CNN, you, you're kind of in another place. And, uh, and, and if you're NRA TV, you're in another place. Well, but what I'm saying is yeah. tell yeah. me where I can go and not get fake news. 
I don't think you can. Oh, okay. Well, then what you're saying is any news is fake news. Yes. Why is it fake news? Because they're trying to... Uh, uh, I believe Phil, that the let me put media, it this way. Let's say tomorrow the, I made you a new... The media a, got let's Trump elected. Let's say tomorrow... Now, I, the, 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 now they the, want to take him down. The media didn't get him elected. His big fat fucking mouth trying to monopolize it, the conversation it, got him elected. I do the same thing. If it, wasn't <laughs> for, if it wasn't for the media giving Trump all of that free press... It enabled oh, him. Oh, I agree to with it. you. I agree with you. But and I was talking to Ronnie tonight about yeah. the fact I that know, it's yeah. a, that it's a a uh, dysfunctional relationship between the press and Trump, and it's like you know um, um, a, a, a guy who beats his wife and she sticks around because she figures she can change him. A uh, love you hate know. relationship. So you know, but the fact is that uh, I, if, if I've said this before and I'll say this again. Trump thinks that the media is the enemy of the people, then the media should stop reporting him. Only report those things which are truly important to your daily lives. In other words, uh, he passes a bill, or he, um, um, it, 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 he goes somewhere other than on the stump for some Republican is, somewhere. I is, mean, there a network, a, is there a network that does that? No, but they should all get together and say, you don't right. like us? We're not going to report you. We're well, only going to report you when you do something king. that is actually newsworthy. Because you going to Colorado to stump for a politician out there is not news. Yes, that's true. It, yes, Jack. Phil was talking about how the networks search for eyeballs. Let's put it in the context of the business that Alex and I both worked in for so many years. Name me any hard rock station that ever played a country tune. They know their audience. You serve your audience. Nothing wrong with that. The problem is we in this country have this illusion, this illusion of about how press operates. You go outside of this country and you will find that there is left-wing press in some countries, right-wing press, government press well, I disagree with you on there the, was this, a time. I, mean, I no I disagree with you in this respect Jack there mm -hmm. uh, there was a time to quote uh, Phil when yeah. radio stations did play country on a top 40 station if it was in the top yeah. 40 or they'd play Frank, Frank Sinatra in the top 40 if uh, on uh, top yep. 40 stations but he said that hard rock the, though that, but top, that was the Jack said hard period. rock yeah, that was the greatest period. I said hard rock, hard rock. You know, as we fractionalized our industry, because because you see, here, let me tell you why I don't like what you just said. Because right. I heard that same thing from the guy who was the head of talk programming at Clear Channel, and his mm -hmm. thing was, you don't put classical music on a rock station. And I tried to say, yeah, but this is a talk station. It's an entirely different animal. You know, you can't compare it, it to running a music station. And, you, and, and on a music station, you wouldn't keep playing the same song over and over and over again. And when you have nothing but conservatives on a radio station or nothing but liberals on a radio station, you're playing the same song over and over and over again. All right, here in my market, one station, when they went to a talk format, after a couple of years, tried doing that. And it sunk so quickly that two good friends of mine wound up with no jobs. Radio is so bruised, and so fractured, and so yeah. marginalized uh, today. It's it's really a dead medium. Uh, you know, Alex, we, we were talking about the fire the other day. That here there was a radio station, uh, and your and and your ex-wife mentioned the large fire. It's the car fire in in uh, Reading. Uh, and in Reading, there was a radio station. By the station. way, why are they calling it the car fire? Was it started by a car? Yeah, but they're spelling it C-A-R-R. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know, I that, don't know why. I uh, heard the explanation for that today, and I wish I could tell you. It had to do with the specific, the specific area around... Because I lived up in that area at one time, and I never heard of anything called car. Uh, neither have I, but it, it, they say it was started by a car... But uh, they're spelling it with two R's, and, uh, and and I don't know why. But oh, it's like the uh, it's like the singer Vicky Carr. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't think she started it either. But uh, to, the, what I was saying about the radio station, because of voice tracking, this radio station, you would never know that there was a fire that's exactly surrounding the, point. the station. Yeah, and that's what's wrong with radio today. Uh, it, there's no... The great thing about a radio station was in the midst of a fire like this, they could become a very valuable asset to the community by giving out warnings about right. where the fire is yeah. going and when it's going. But they can't do that in Reading because all the stations are being programmed from somewhere else. And, and, and in the future, uh, because they just passed a rule, you don't even have to have offices in that town. All you have to have is a transmitter. Well, my buddy is one is the PD that programs the station. And he was upset that no one got on there and then just tapped into a live feed from the local TV station or something and and gave this news. You know, they they can do that. You didn't. Uh, you wouldn't need to do that if you had a staff doing original programming at that station. You go on the air and you cover it. But it, that's not know? how it it operates now because uh, people don't want to spend any money. You yeah. know, they don't even have their yeah. own PD. He's 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 doing yeah. seven seven uh -huh. different stations. Phil, I hate to take and, and engineers, forget it. Engineers those companies, are all contracted. Those companies never did want to spend any money. Right. They they wound up having to spend money because at one time we had some rules and regulations, but some teeth in them. Yeah. But anyway, getting back to Alex Jones, which is what yeah. started yeah. this whole thing. You know, I am conflicted about these people taking him off. I think he's dangerous. I think he is irresponsible. I think he he doesn't think of his audience's safety in what he does. But nevertheless, if you've got an open forum, if you're letting Hannity have his site, and you're letting every other talk show host in America, including Alex Bennett, use your services, then I think that he has a right to be on. And, how about and, these anti-fada people? Too. I agree. I how, agree. How, how about these anti-fada people and these Black Lives Matters and these other things that are calling for certain kinds of protests and violent protests against uh, Republicans that want to speak, and they're using Facebook as a uh, what, as a vehicle? What violent protests have you heard Black Lives Matter call for? Name one. Uh, the the, uh, the ones in Texas where the five cops got shot and killed. Hey, hey, oh, nothing to do with Black Lives Matter, and you know it, and I know it too. So don't tell that lie. And you, and, and, and by the way, he's uh, uh, Jack is calling us from Texas. He knows what goes on in Texas. Yeah, I understand. But in Dallas, there there was uh, it was five cops that was shot, and it was a, and no, they said it was a Black no, Lives were, Matter protest. Yeah, but and, but was right. it, let's say it was was it as a result of a Facebook post? Uh, I. They used Facebook and Twitter and other platforms now, you to. Want to hear, do, you, do you care to hear the real story? You want me to just shut up? Yeah, well, you, yeah, you can shut up if you want. But, uh, and, and also, uh, there are. Because you're not groups, going to and listen they, to it. There, there are groups like Hezbollah and others in ISIS that are using Facebook and uh, to mobilize their uh, their members. Well, I'm sure, I, and I'm sure they still are. I'm sure Facebook yeah. hasn't found them. Uh, but they found Alex Jones because he's hiding in plain sight. Yeah, I, yes, I interrupted. Uh, yes, you Jack. did interrupt Jack. Yeah. Here's the story on what happened in Dallas. Yeah. Black Lives Matter did have a rally in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Up until the shooting incident, it was peaceful. As a matter of fact, you had Black Lives members going up to police officers, being, you know, hi, hello, how are you? Thank you for being here to protect us. The guy that did that was a former U.S. vet who was being treated by the VA for, you know, stress syndrome. Yeah. And the guy went crackers. And you don't think that this uh, event triggered uh his actions well first of all look any black man in america who isn't pissed off is crazy <laughs> and that was said more than 50 years ago by james baldwin not by jack bishop is he one of the baldwin brothers see no, you always make a joke about something sisters. when we talk seriously this is it's amazing <laughs> Yeah, you should treat. Well, you, you should teach, at least you get some comedy. You should on teach the show. that technique to Trump. He can put it in his kit bag. Yeah, yeah, um, and pack his troubles. Yeah. Hello, Kevin. By the way, um, uh, 
uh, it, 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 to me, uh, I just feel, I feel uncomfortable anytime I hear about anybody getting censored, okay? Even if I totally disagree with them, and even if they are ISIS and Nazis, okay? I feel uncomfortable because I feel that that is then making a judgment, allowing someone to make a judgment about what's proper and what's not proper. You know, it's and called an editor. Don't they have no, editors no, no, on no, newspapers ed, ed, that determine ed, 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 what gets no, printed? No, ed, editors sit there to correct copy and to clean it up and to make sure it is in proper English. That's what an editor does. But there are editorials that are written for newspapers, and doesn't uh, the uh, the editor or uh, someone at the newspaper you, it's decide? It's a newspaper. It's not Facebook. It's not an. It's not like a giant chalkboard where you can write anything on it but you want to. That's right. That's what I said before, that, you, you know, because it isn't a giant chalkboard that anyone can write anything they want but on. But it is. It they edit. is. Facebook is exactly that. And if you ask them why they created Facebook, it was so people could share their thoughts with other people. Yeah, but it was Yeah, but now we're be... saying, but, you, you know, you can't share that thought because we don't approve of it. Now, look, I feel that uh, Alex Jones is an asshole and that what he says is dangerous and, 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 and dangerous in that it could potentially harm people. And in spite of the fact that I believe that, uh, I will stand up for his right to be there. I also stand up yeah, for everybody yeah, else's yeah, right to yeah, go on that same... What? What were you saying, Facebook Kevin? Facebook is basically playing FCC. Yes, exactly. Is, is Alex Jones perpetrating fake news in your opinion? Yes, oh yeah, my opinion. Yes, yeah. he is and and either. is Facebook trying to limit fake news on their platform? Well, according to you, then they should take MSNBC and Fox off as well. Yes, they should. <laughs> oh, the, you know, and, the, and just leave it for grandmothers to sh to show pictures of their grandchildren to their friends, and the that's what Facebook is. The, the, the logic, we need to, everything should be shut down. Yes, the way we need to look at Facebook. Is it's like the graffiti wall. Yeah. You cut there with your paintbrush, you put your shit on it, and you walk away. Well, I don't want to see dicks on the wall. You know, I, I want to see pictures of people's grandchildren. We don't and care what, it. then you go to somebody else's page. Yeah, there is no other the, page. Well, I block everybody, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, they do. They censor, uh, they censor pornography on Facebook, although they don't on Twitter. On yeah. Twitter, I can find hardcore porn. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Twitter. Twitter hasn't. Uh, they haven't banned him yet, have they? No. Twitter no. has not banned. Uh, uh, Alex. They haven't Jones. banned Trump. Yeah. <laughs> you know. They haven't banned yeah, I mean, Alex. Jones. Let's not go there because he's. And and I, you know, I mean, I think more of them for not doing that. Now I don't know. Did YouTube ban Alex Jones too? Yeah, they yeah. did. You know, Everybody I just. Everybody but Twitter. Yeah, but I, sometimes I, these things get out of hand. Like, uh, oh, what was the uh, uh, the girl country group that got banned by all the country stations? Oh, the Dixie Chicks. The yeah. Dixie, Dixie Chicks. Chicks. Oh, Dixie Chicks. Yep, that was yeah. censorship in the highest order. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that was a protest. They they no, it, were it was, uh, they were protesting was, their position on the war. Uh, yeah. That uh, Dixie Chicks, I don't think, supported the war in Iraq. Right, and the radio right, right, and the country yeah. radio stations pulled their records so fast that they were like frisbees going out a window. Yes. Same shit. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. So I, was that right? No, it wasn't right. It wasn't right. And I, you know, I'm here. I'm defending a guy who goes against every political position I could possibly have. Weren't you in the same position a few years ago with CARE? With who? Was it CARE? Or, uh, uh, there was a, uh, a left-wing uh, group that uh, was unhappy uh, with your uh, position. They tried to get you fired at, from Live 105, didn't they? Uh, oh, you was, were talking about GLAD? I'm, I'm not sure of the acronym. Uh, but there was, uh, there was one that tried to uh, didn't like what you were saying. And, no, and they didn't like. They you. they didn't. It wasn't. They didn't like what I was saying. They didn't like what Sam Kinison was saying on my show. Um, and and I told Glad to go shove it, uh, shove it, uh, 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 sho <laughs> to shove it up their ass 
which they then yeah. said, that sounds like a nice idea. But anyway, I told them to <laughs> shove it up their ass, no, it and, wasn't, I, and it wasn't I, actually, I actually stormed out of this meeting telling them that this is, this is censorship on your part. You know, uh, you're listening to the guy with a skewed view, and then they played us a tape of all the horrible things he had said, but they were totally out of context from the rest of his act, you know. No, this 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 was something. They, these were guys going after you, not after Ooh, Sam Peterson or what he said. The only uh, other guy that went after the only guy that went had, after me was a uh, was in San Francisco was a uh, uh, was some guy who wrote to my sponsors. And uh, no, that wasn't the. Uh, that, it wasn't. I the don't know. Then guy. I don't know what you were ta- what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure Tommy Amaguchi would remember it. But uh, I don't remember it. If I if if I don't remember it, how's Tommy? You don't Amaguchi? remember me. Well, I still think you've been putting me on. Anyway, yes, Jack. Look, if you're a talk show host and you're doing anything that is engaging and creditable, you're going to have somebody come after you. It's it's part of the dues you pay for what you do. But I'll tell you what happens, and I'll tell you there's a terrible thing that's happened to this guy James Gunn, the director of the Guardians of the Galaxy films, the guy mm-hmm. who, who wrote them and, and directed them. And they're really great little films. Uh, he got uh, fired by Disney because of some tweets he did 10 years ago making jokes about pedophilia and something else. And, oh, and some conservative talk show host dug into his past, found these tweets, and then put them up on Twitter and saying, how can Disney have somebody like this who would do this kind of thing? This is a conservative right-wing talk show host. And Disney immediately fired Gunn from the series. Not asking any questions, not saying, hey, this happened 10 years ago, not even asking Gunn what happened. Gunn said, hey, I, the, these were meant to be jokes. They were bad jokes, but they were jokes. And they fired him. Now all the get, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy actors uh, and, and uh, crew are demanding that he be hired back by Disney, but it doesn't look like they're going to. Now, this is a company that allowed themselves to be bullied by somebody they don't even know by material that was 10 years old. Hey, they did the same thing to Roseanne Barr. You know, I mean, the thing that I she think, said about I think, Valerie I Jarrett, think, I don't think, I think was so bad. I, well, I think it was terrible. But she it was ap- terrible, but, wait but it wasn't But she terrible. apologized for it, and that right. should have been enough, and it's on, uh, you know, ten, f- five years ago. Well, uh, let, me, let me read something to you. But five years ago... Uh, this wouldn't have even been an issue. We just weren't as sensitive about these things. But uh, Brett Easton Ellis, you know he is the writer, claims free speech is being muzzled in the current political climate and Hollywood's become more uninteresting as creativity is stifled. Speaking to Rolling Stone, the author of the generation-defining book Less Than Zero and the screenwriter for American Psycho uh, uh, said... The recent stifling of speech in the current political climate means everyone feels muzzled now, and it comes down to how much you can take. Can I talk about what I'm feeling and say my opinion? You get to a point where there's a break, a fissure, and you either decide to go through it and be yourself, or you decide to hide. I don't know what kind of life it's like to hide. I feel more comfortable expressing myself as a completely transparent man now. Uh, So do you think that... No, you we're living that, in a time where uh, people feel muzzled, you know, and where Disney goes batshit because somebody wrote a tweet 10, 15 years ago that was now unearthed by some right winger who doesn't like James Gunn's political opinions. But in Hollywood, if you say something negative about Trump, that's hailed. If you say Trump should be buggered by, uh, by uh, old men, uh, and, uh, you know, people would say, oh, that's that's great. You know, we hate Trump. But if you I, say I don't something, think that's ne- I don't think that's true, Phil. Well, look, look I, at I, the, I his star on the Walk of Hollywood. You know, they're not even going to replace it. Well, uh, they, they're not going to replace it because every time they put it back, somebody else digs it up. Yeah, well, there's there's ways of making sure that doesn't happen. You can put something around it. Well, this, it's a rather spurious reason why there's even a star on the Walk of Fame for him anyway. I mean, a reality star? Fuck you. It was a TV he's, thing. He's not a, mo- he's not a movie star. He's not a big... No, but he had, uh, it, was, it has a TV symbol on it. Yeah, so? Uh, hey, hey, Phil, if you want Trump to be hailed, you need... You, you righties, you conservatives, you Republicans need to start your own movie colony 
You know, when black folks could not get jobs in Hollywood, what did black folks do? Started Black Hollywood. I thought they went into the carpet business. Making pictures for black audiences yeah. that didn't feature Step and Fetch it being a buffoon. Well, they yeah, they also, even in baseball, they had their own league. But yeah, I think that that wasn't, uh, that wasn't, um, that yeah. non-integration uh, was a negative thing. Uh, I think that it was no you, different having their own league than it was had, telling them they had to have their own water fountain. But you handle the situation the best you can. If you feel it's unfair, sure. You know, you protest. You do uh, what you can to change the situation. No, but but I, I think that's segregation. That's and not do nothing. You know, the, the, you know I, I think that that's nothing more than what they were doing in the, in the, in the South. You know, you couldn't go to you know, blacks couldn't go to this school because they were uh, the color of their skin. You, they you couldn't had, drink from that water fountain. You had almost the same thing in San Francisco for Asians in the early. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. No. This country has a a, 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 a a sullied past. That's what, and when, like when I said it, earlier, name me a time when we haven't been divided over something. There, there is no time. Human beings will always find a way to other somebody. Yeah, there, there. Ha I, I agree with you. There has never been a time when we weren't divided, but now with the internet, with Facebook, with the news taking sides. You know, Alex alluded to 20, 25 years ago when newscasts you couldn't tell the from the inflection in the guy's voice whether he was to the right or to the left, uh, and there was no. Some of these guys didn't even vote. You, you because still, they didn't. you still can't tell on, with the uh, with the you know, with the, wait, 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 hold on a second. Hold, stay. Steve, 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 up, Steve, wait a minute. Uh, uh, forget yeah. it. Go yeah. ahead, Steve. Go ahead, Steve. No, right, right, right. What I wanted to say is, it's funny, we have all um, this media and all things that can unite us. And I think the younger people are more united, but the people who are, you know, middle-aged and older uh, I think I think there's more division between them than, than oh, the younger no. people I don't oh, agree with that at all I, no. I, I gotta agree with Steve the people that are throwing rocks at at, at windows when uh, uh, mm -hmm. that guy Bert Shapiro was going to speak and that other oh, the gay yeah, right wing yeah, guy yeah. And they're and they're burning dumpsters and so forth. There weren't old people out there. Those those were you know college kids. That that's true. Yeah, you're yeah. Okay, now yeah. can I make a point? I was going to make. Uh, you're allowed. Yeah, yeah, I'm allowed. Uh, <laughs> Phil, you said that uh, you know that the, the you, you know the, you, in the old days we didn't have uh, anchor people who had, you could tell their opinion. Uh, and, and you were quite right, Phil, because you're talking about MSNBC and CNB, CNN, and you're talking about uh, these 24-7 operations that are, really are more entertainment than they are news, and they're trying to get an audience and so on. But what you're talking about is you only had three networks, and they did yeah. the news every night. Okay. Lester Holt, left or right? Uh, you don't left. know, do you? Yeah, I think he's left. You but think? No, no, but do you have any reason to believe he's not right? You might be very surprised to find out he's a right winger. No, I, I don't. Is, have any is there anything that tells you in his delivery that he's left uh, or right? Lester Holt. Uh, yeah, uh, he seems to be more uh, takes those more mundane stories like storms and uh, things, things like yeah, but that. I did. I that's not him. the question I'm asking you, Phil. Can you tell whether he's left or right? Uh, no. Okay. How about David Muir? I don't know him. No? Well, that's the guy on ABC. How about the guy on CBS? Every night, Jeff, Jeff Glore. Don't know him either. So, so really, you don't watch the people who actually... No, but I, I, can't, I, I can't tell you whether Glore is left or right. I can't tell you whether Muir is left uh, or right because what, what about, there's never been any indication when I watch them that I can tell. What about Major Garrett? Major Garrett is, uh, he's uh, CBS. CBS. He's he used to be at Fox. Well, he's at CBS now. Yeah. And, and whenever, that, and, he, whenever he talks about Trump in a negative way, you see this smile and smirk on his face that he's well, so happy. Well, that's funny that because this in. was a guy and, who, and spent, no. who spent the last few years at a right-wing organization being a right-winger. Well, he's, he's certainly not one now. 
and basically he's a commentator, which is not about the news. But about that's what they yeah. all are. No, Jack. they're uh, all commentators. Well, no, you're talking about on the on the uh, the the uh, uh, cable news networks. We're, I'm talking about the news, the thing that goes on at, at seven thirty every night, six thirty every night. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. And those guys in their delivery, the anchors, you can't tell. You really can. You, you look at NBC, CBS, and, and these uh, the broadcast news services, mm -hmm. their ratings are so low in comparison to uh, We're not, the, the, uh, you know, you're but like, nobody's you're watching like, you're, like you're, you're like Trump. You think ratings are everything. Let's, uh, ratings don't matter. We're talking about, you made a statement. You said right. to me, you can tell from the the anchors that, that what yeah. where they stand, and I told you you can't. I can't. Okay. I don't know well, that Lester I, I, Holt I isn't isn't people. a Republican. You, you, you have okay, to well, separate. Wait a minute. You have to separate network news from the network news shows because there's a difference between the network news shows and the network news reports. Yeah. Okay. yeah. What about uh, C C B S N? Uh, CBS the, and okay, is a different. cable organ is that's is actually different. an internet organization. Well, now, when you maybe, get into those shows, you have definite bias. And right. by the you way, by the way, I have watched have CBS to, yeah. and I defy you to tell me with their anchors what political uh, persuasion okay. uh, they uh, that, are. Uh, the guy uh, Vlad, what's his name? He's definitely left. And uh, even the woman that's uh, next how do to you him know? That, how do you know? Because it's the way they. Report no, the that's, stories. No, that's that's your interpretation, Phil. Phil, I'm you know, there's I'm, there's one I want to ask because I, I'm getting like sometimes conflicting um, reports uh, from people. Um, what about Dan Rather? Oh, he's definitely left. Uh, he he hated Bush he is, so but, much. Yeah, uh, he even yeah. reported fake news, and they got him fired. How about uh, how about uh, Coast Guard how, how how about uh, how about Walter Cronkite? Uh, uh, I think Uncle he's left. The most no, fair. Wow. Yeah, he was left. He was definitely no, left. No. No. How do you know he was? He left? wasn't while he was reporting, but once he retired, I I believe that he was uh, more to the left. No, he, he didn't do anything regarding politics when he when he retired. He actually did stuff about science and about the environment. He was in, he was interviewed right. as yeah. far as his political leanings after he retired. But while he was on, you couldn't tell what he was. No, when he was on, you couldn't tell, and and that's the way news should be reported. But uh, yes. when he when yeah. he retired, he said that uh, you know he didn't want to inflict. Okay, any... now now do you know and how that's, you that's know, the you whole know how point C... right there? That's you, the whole point. Do you know how right. CNN was created? Uh, Communist News Network. Uh, yeah, it was a, ca <laughs> a, ca a cable network. Uh, uh, yeah, was it Turner that created? Yeah, let me tell you about yeah. Turner. Turner yeah. Turner was watching CBS one night, much to your saying what you're saying he watched dan rather do the news and at one point he saw dan rather smirk at a story right. he was doing and turner said i want to start a network where i will have none of that and he started cnn as a totally unbiased network now he realized that any reporter any anchor is going to have a political bias we're human beings we have right. an opinion but he didn't want their peop his people to in any way use phraseology or smirk at a story or do anything like that. The idea of CNN and the reason it was created in the first place was as a totally non-judgmental news organization. It's not that way anymore. Well, more so than the other two. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's more neutral. Yeah. But it, yeah. It's, not, yeah. It's, not, it's not neutral. It, it is. No. I, I get all my news now from Glenn Beck. Yes, uh, Jack. <laughs> Phil, if you, you know, if you wouldn't mind going back in time, listen to some of the newscasts or some of the news commentary shows from the 1940s, 1950s. Way You mean more. like the newsreels? No, no. I'm talking about there were there was a time in the industry where you had lots of commentary shows. 
uh, H.B. Kaldenborn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but everything was so much more even keeled, even no, with the commentary it shows. Was it? No, it. You want to believe that because we always so, want to think the good old <laughs> days were good, and the good old days were usually just as bad as the current days. So you're saying yeah, this is selective really, hearing? Really, yeah. I really. Yeah. Now, 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 I'm going to tell you about something that I did, because I got tired of this bullshit and these conversations. Let me turn this thing on here. Uh, I videotaped, back when we had videotape, I videotaped the evening news. Uh, and this was back in, uh, back in the late, well, let's see, yeah, early 90s. After hearing liberal friends of mine talk about how biased the news was for conservatives and hearing conservatives say how biased the news was uh, for liberals. So I videotaped an evening newscast. I got my conservative friends together one night, my liberal friends together another night and asked them, okay, tell me what you think. And it always fell down on their political position as to which way it was biased. If it was the liberals, they said, oh, it's biased to the right. If it was the righties, oh, it's biased to the left. Invariably, it fell down that way. And you don't think that by watching uh, the news today, and I'm talking about cable news, uh, that uh, there is a bias uh, between the different... Cable news networks. We're not what? saying there isn't, but who? But yeah. that that whole war started when Fox decided to take a position, and then the others figured, well, we'll compete by taking another position. I mean, it, but you're talking about entirely different landscape when you're talking about cable news. You're talking about news that is absolutely biased one way or another. But when you go to the news at, uh, for instance, the New York Times is not biased except on its editorial page. And then it's biased. But that's where it allows itself to be biased. And the op-ed pieces, and they choose right-wing op-ed pieces. They have some great op-ed writers, uh, right-wing writers at the New York Times. Now, do you read the Washington Times? Yes, I've read the Washington Times. And what do you think about that? Uh, I think it's far more biased than the New York Times. Really, just because they report no, uh, no, things that no, you don't see no, in the New no, York Times? No, because they are so right-skewed. What I'm saying is the time try, Times tries to be even-handed. Uh, and it, it's not easy. It's not an easy task. Jeff, you, you've you been quiet here. Anything you want to throw into here? Uh, turn your mic on. You're, you're yeah. muted. Yeah. Muted. Sorry. Uh, my daughter used to produce for Fox TV in Boston. And she tried to to produce facts. That's all. That was the way the approach was. Well, that uh, was and that was Fox, local. But that was local. That was local news. And they, Fox had a local. different Fox had a different attitude about their local newscast. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it's not necessarily the organization. And I think when you look at the stuff uh, that we see on. Uh, What's that? Uh, the Fox stuff that's uh, Fox business, and I don't know what the hell business you that know, is. You know, I never could get, can I can, can I get you say something here as long as you brought it up, Jeff? Fox business. What exactly is business about that channel? <laughs> I it, can't it's first. just Maria guys, it's just, it's, no, it's just, damn, it's, it, it's, it, wait a minute, it's just seven. guys, it's just guys and women sitting there talking about the politics of the day with a ticker running under them. And it's called yep. Fox Business. You know, when I go over to CNBC, I don't see them touting the MSNBC stuff. They're actually uh, a, a, a business network. They're talking money, yeah. You go into the financial houses in this country, and you will not find a single one of them has Fox Business on their <laughs> screens. They've got, they've got MSNBC on all the time. Yes, Jeff. Or Bloomberg. So what I what I'm saying is that if you go to Fox or you go to CNBC or or any of these others, they're strategizing to make money, to make profit, and they take as a, a position. And maybe Phil doesn't like that position, 
uh, maybe Alex likes this position. Maybe Jack likes that position. Okay. Uh, maybe Jeff likes this other one. And and maybe I'm a more liberal person. I want to look at a little bit of each three. But you got to realize that these guys are trying to generate profit. And, and, and that's why they're focusing on, on you know, each I one. Watch, I watch Bloomberg a lot, uh, you know, uh, business news. And it seems to be a pretty straight forward thing even though bloomberg seems to be a real left winger but you know his his network is uh, is pretty straight up yes uh, jack if you look at fox's operations in other countries they always come down in favor of the government position that is the one consistency with fox they are the mouthpiece of the government that is in power. How can you say that about the when Obama was in power? Uh, you know, Fox didn't seem to be very pro-Obama. Well, the thing is, actually, uh, they were in some ways. You know, usually they come down in favor of the right-wing government. Yeah. And there are those of us that believe and say that Obama damn sure was no liberal. And listen, you know, I uh, never saw any, I never saw anything wrong with Ailes starting up Fox the way he started Fox because his idea was the press was so right left wing that he wanted to have a right wing voice uh, in yeah. the mix, and I I saw that as valuable, but mm -hmm. you know it's you, you, you do that in a way in which you're not tainting the news to take that position. In other words, you don't suddenly mold the news to be right wing because the news news is news news is absolute you know and you don't mold it to the way you want it to be but when it comes to commentary and those late night people like Hannity and so on have at it but when you're doing a newscast do a newscast and Phil I want to assure you and I think Alex would say the same thing we have never worked in a facility that was actually a left-wing facility because all the guys that are signing the checks are like you. Uh, well, you know, I, there's WBAI, you know, Pacifica Network. That's definitely a left-wing uh, facility. It's, it's, it's non-commercial. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. Doesn't but, count. You know, but they're spreading an agenda. That, uh, it doesn't you know, count. It's not a commercial organization. He's absolutely right. Most bosses that I've ever had at radio stations or at television stations have been to the right. Yeah. I'll tell you one that'll shock you. You know, I worked for James Brown for almost five years. We bought four radio stations, and James Brown was so far in the Republican bag that uh, he didn't get invited to the black club meetings. Well, Papa brought, got a brand new bag. That's well, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And he was a Rolling Stone. Yeah, but I mean, uh, uh, do you remember the guy that started? Uh, was the first uh, editor of the Washington Times? I think he came out of TV. I I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name properly, but it was like and and Andover or and uh, he was the guy that set the uh, the agenda for the Washington Times, even though it was owned by um, uh, Sun Young Moon. The, Sun Young Moon, right? Uh, he, he didn't dabble into the editorial part of it. And uh, this guy, I guess he was a, a TV guy that uh, Moon had hired. And, uh, but he was supposed to be a really uh, neutral uh, kind of uh, news guy. And, uh, and, and they, would just, they would just report stories that you wouldn't necessarily hear in, in other places. And I think that, that's, uh, that they, these stories don't get reported on a number of stations well, and, and even though they're not skewing the news they're skewing uh, it in, uh, in how they're uh, in in what they report a right winger owns, what they choose uh, to let yeah you but see. a right winger owns the washington post uh who bezos yeah is bezos a right winger i yep. thought he was at war with trump well he's at war with trump but he's a right winger you know don't forget trump is not a republican he's just using the republicans uh well, he's doing a pretty damn good job. Let me ask uh, you, he's no, a better Republican than all. Uh, okay, let me let me ask you this question, Phil. I, you yeah. know, 
the last couple of days, Trump has told all kinds of stories about what went on at Trump Tower. To so. nothing happened. I didn't know about these meetings. Uh, my son didn't do anything wrong. Blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, he's admitting that something went on at Trump Tower. How do you feel about the fact he's been lying all along, and now finally maybe he's telling How the you, truth? Maybe he just got different information recently and oh, he's and he's oh, coming Phil, out with that Phil, information Phil, how, come how do you know on. it's a lie how do you know it's a lie you know uh, maybe what's happened is he was just given new information that they was talk about hillary and not this the adoptions. this guy is so a guy who out. at this point in his life doesn't even know when he's lying you know was he at the meeting who? So all he can report is secondhand. What it he now is believed that he was, yes, in a meeting with the Russians. Yes. He was not in that meeting. Uh, <laughs> no. Maybe he wasn't in the room, Christ. but you know, there is a thing called <laughs> calling. He, he wasn't sure what tower he was in. Matter of fact, most of the people that were in that meeting walked out. And, and uh, you know, but so. The, the question we should not ask, the question we should ask whether or not he was in the meeting. The question was... Uh, how, how do you feel about the fact that his story keeps changing? That it has, over the last two years, the, it has changed I'll over give, and I'll, over and over again. I'll give you a whataboutism. Or it changes. No, I, this, isn't what about him. Him. this isn't whataboutism. This isn't whataboutism. I'm asking you... In, in this campaign, you had Trump going after Hillary for dirt. In this campaign, you had Hillary going after Trump for dirt and even ha paying somebody to make it up. But she wasn't uh, going to a Dasi. foreign. She wasn't going to a foreign country to right, get Jerry. it. <laughs> yes, Jeff. That's pretty good. I think Phil should answer the question. Uh, give me the question again. What was the question? Oh, oh uh, the meeting. Why was he uh, coming out with different things? And I did answer that. I said. He got different information, and he's always been transparent. Wait a minute. In this kind of situation where he was present on some level, okay, mm -hmm. whether he was in the room or not in the room, he's been changing his story over and over again. Well, maybe the information he got has changed. No, the, if the information of what you saw and what you did doesn't change. But he didn't see anything. He wasn't there. But he now says he was. You no, know, he never said he was in that room with that uh, Russian attorney. And, he said he uh, was aware of the meeting. He was in, you know, involved in okaying the meeting for ha to happen. I mean, come on. I, the I guy don't, don't, is a lying sack of shit. He said there never were any Donald meetings at Trump, Trump Towers. Jr. We never met with the Russians. Donald Trump Jr. was in the meeting. Answer 465. What are you saying uh, <laughs> there, Keith? Keith, what answer 465? <laughs> He's probably saying that's the 465 uh, 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 set answer that you know that you you give as a Republican. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, yes, uh, yeah. uh, Jack. That guy. Hey, Phil. I want to know how do you feel about the fact that Trump said he doesn't play golf when Obama was playing golf? So I'll never play golf, and yet he's playing golf all the damn time. You call that playing golf? What Trump does? Well, that is a, <laughs> that is some validity with <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know, hey, that's the way he conducts business, I guess. Uh, he gets people out there. You mean, in other words, it's it's it's, 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 it's Obama doing the same thing. It's po It's a positive thing to be a lion sack of shit. That was what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Hey. So I, um, yeah. Yes, Steve. I'm not. I, I just, uh, I'm going to cut out. I need a little break, and I'll call well, Wait a minute. The show's uh, only got three minutes. So the show's only got three minutes left, Steve. No, no. Yeah, you, I, you, I, you I, 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 I have to get going. But I, I, will, I will call back. Oh, boy. Yeah. That, that, Thanks okay, so much. Yeah, yeah, Probably yeah. got to go to the bathroom. Give yeah. him a break. Has anybody, yes, I do. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to do some show prep here. Uh, anybody heard anything about the special elections? Uh, no, oh, I didn't. Yeah, there's five of them going on right now. Yeah, no, that, I haven't. Uh, that Ohio one is was uh, neck and neck, and they they were looking for recount last I saw. Oh, That's O'Connor the... and uh, was the Democrat. O'Connor and, and uh, Bladderblos or whatever his name is. Yeah, and Trump, I guess, uh, went in and campaigned last week for that guy. So uh, they always said it was neck and neck that the Republican had a one-point advantage. There was a 4,000 was... 4, vote uh Difference, and they said that that would cause a recount if it comes up to that. And, 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 who, and who's favor for who? Well, the provisionals was left. 
No, but oh, who? But, but in so favor of who? Who was leading? Yeah. Uh, the Republican. All right. Okay. That might be the one percent. By the way, now, folks, if, if look at this screen. This is what you're going to have to get used to when we uh, we go to the new sky. This is pretty nice, actually. <laughs> well, no, you know what? Uh, uh, when it gets like look. this, I always think it's like a Be Beatles album cover. Uh, I, we, uh, they can all I... see it, Phil. You don't have to show it to them. Well, this is but, what it looks like on my screen. I have a Mac. Who 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 is that handsome, good-looking, dark gentleman? Uh, What's it going to be? Oh, you mean the What's Negro? The the uh, no, no. You mean uh, Jeff? I, I think he uh, he's got a good tan. He's been sailing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <sighs> well, well. Also, I was concerned about the uh, was it Kansas that was voting on uh, right to work, or as we call it here in Texas, right to starve. Yeah, I don't remember that one. I was just watching the Ohio one. Uh, and uh, that McCaskill. What what's happening with her? Claire McCaskill. Uh, is, I, I don't yeah. remember that one either. I was. Isn't that one more that, to Ohio. Uh, Republicans want to get rid of her? Well, of course. Yeah. Because she's a Democrat. Yeah. No, but that's well, one that they really yeah. like to get rid of. Yeah. Hey, uh, just a, a, a quick aside. How does this uh, uh, s uh, sound tonight? Sounds pretty terrible side? tonight. Sounds really, really? I haven't yeah. uh, adjusted the bass and all of those things. But no, it sounds it's, it's, no, it's distorted. It's, it's yeah. distorted. It's been distorted oh, all really? night. Yeah. Yeah. Been uh, right. and there's kind of a kind of a, a, a hissy sound in it too going on. Oh, that could be the fan. No, yeah. it's kind of no, it's not the fan. No, no, it's no, a it, wussy sound. Yeah. It's a kind oh, of a, you mean like a Republican a wussy sound. sound? Yeah. <laughs> Quite frankly, Phil, I can't tell the difference between that board and this and what the board you had. Seventeen fifty-four vote difference. What? Really? Yeah. Seventeen fifty-four on, uh, on the Balderson. Hmm. Yeah. Are there any other uh, campaigns that they're reporting? Uh, I was just looking, but they're changing. Yeah, they're changing over now because of the hour. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, you know. Um, um, we'll see what happens. I don't know. I. 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 I I don't think much is going to happen in this world, to tell you the truth. I don't think uh, America is going to change much. I think we've just become a shitty country. <laughs> See, I think things have changed for the better. Now, as my wife said, I think it's become a shithole country, just like they were talking about a couple of weeks ago. I, I went to Hayward the other day. That's a shithole country. You know? Isn't uh, it? Yeah. Yeah. It's just a bunch of well. Uh, next used tomorrow, car tomorrow, tomorrow, we'll get to talk about. We we haven't even saved the part about Trump, where it seems that every time he talks about black people, he calls them dumb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that Don Lemon. He and what he said was that Don Lemon was dumb. Oh, but, but he, no, but he, he also but Le, he LeBron all, James took offense to that. He he said LeBron James was dumb. Listen, LeBron I, I James is Don anything Lemon. but dumb. Hey, yeah. you better go, Jack. Because I'm playing yeah. my theme oh, here. That's your theme. Huh? Yeah, but by the time he yeah. figures out how to turn off the Skype, you'll have plenty of time. I'll get Let me say one thing. <laughs> fuck you, fuck you, and fuck. <laughs> okay. yeah, good. Thank you, Jack. That's fuck Jack you. Bishop. We'll thank him for being here. We'll also thank uh, a small panel tonight, but it was fine. Uh, we'll thank uh, 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 Phil, of course, John. and uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Jeff, and, uh, and Kevin uh, for all being here tonight. Uh, thank John you so much. Too. What? John and Steve. Steve. John who? Carulas. Oh, oh him. He was here so for just a short time. We don't give him a plug. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, you're you're through. biased. Uh, of course I'm biased. Anyway, wave goodbye. Who's left there? Will you? Give it a wave. Okay. All right. That's it. That's it. They, they're reluctant to wave. Uh, well, that's all right. Uh, it doesn't hurt. Uh, listen, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, we're here uh, again tomorrow. In the meantime, Jack Bishop is next, the guy you just heard with his own little program for the next uh, two hours, uh, or one hour, rather. And then at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, it's Connections, or Conniptions, as I sometimes like to call it, with uh, coming out of Florida. And that's at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Tomorrow night, we start off the whole thing with... Uh, the, the arena with the franchise MC at nine at uh, eight thirty at nine thirty. It's Damian Chaplin and the Exchange. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow night, ten o'clock, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, 
Tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.